Welcome to the Armchair Cricketologist Show, a show from a fan for the fans. This is episode 1. In today's episode, we recap the second test match between India and Bangladesh. We talk about India's performance so far in the World Test Championship. Then we talk about the opportunities or challenges that lie ahead of India. Uh, what are the different scenarios under which India can qualify into the World Test Championship Finals. And then we end with a few sundries. Let's recap the second test match and eventually the series. India beat Bangladesh by three wickets to win the series 2-0. This was a very uh, hard-fought test match. I think India were challenged significantly in this one. And I think it, this will turn out to be a good rehearsal before the series against Australia. So it was important that India goes through one such challenging hard-fought test match. The way it panned out was Bangladesh decided to bat first after winning the toss. They put up a slightly under par 227. Mominul on his comeback scored 84 runs. This was This was a good comeback for him because in his previous uh, 10 or 12 test matches, he hadn't even crossed the single digit mark. Uh, Ashwin and Siraj shared four wickets between them, but then India in reply scored 314, which could have been a lot less, right? So the top order failed again. Uh, at a point, India were 94 for four with Rahul, Gil, Pujara and Kohli all back in the pavilion. But then Pant and Ayer scored uh, 159 runs uh, between them. And this partnership became crucial for India to reach uh, that 314. In response, Bangladesh uh, scored 231. Some fighting innings from Zakir Hassan and it's just second test match. The fiery innings from Litin Das propelled them to that score. But don't forget the contributions of Narul and Tuskin, right? I think they came up with uh, very crucial contributions at the end to help Bangladesh reach that 213 because at a point, Bangladesh were 113 for 6, which means I think they had a lead of just around uh, 26 runs and they had lost 6 wickets. So India's bowling to the lower order was not that efficient, right? I think Bangladesh were very positive, which eventually meant that India had to chase 145 in order to register a win. This 145 was a tricky total. Yes, it was not uh, very high, but it was also slightly tricky to chase, right? We Batsmen didn't know which approach to take. Should they go for an all-out attack or should they be defensive? And that confusion showed in the batting, right? India were tottering at a stage. They were 74 for 7, needing 71 runs uh, with just 3 wickets in hand. The top order had failed again. India were 56 for 5, 71 for 6. India were always struggling in that uh, final innings. However, that crucial partnership between Ashwin and Shreya ensured that there were no more wickets falling and I India eventually reached the target. Or Mendy played really well, uh, taking 5 wickets for 63. He was the record in chief, pulling the spell of his life, I think, in that final test match. Bangladesh, again, so near and yet so far, right? They have challenged India in every match that they've played against us now, in all formats, right? They won the ODI series 2 1. They have come very close to beating us in different matches, be it T20s, be it ODIs. And now uh, this test match right, really shows how uh, Bangladesh's evolution as a cricketing nation has come up. During this test match, there were some key things that happened, right? And one of, one of the decisions was Kuldeep's omission. And there was a lot of talk around, should Kuldeep be in the side? He was the player of the match in the last game. Why was he dropped? So it did come as a surprise for quite a few people, but I thought it was logical. When the wicket on the first day seemed to be assisting the Pacers, I think KL Rahul and Rahul Dravid decided to go in with that extra seamer to take advantage of uh, the, the help that the seamers would get, right? If we now look at how the wickets distribution lined up, we can very easily see that in the first innings where India were bowling, our Pacers took six wickets and spinners took four. Right, so Pacers actually took more wickets and this sort of set up the match for us in a good way, right? Because the Pacers were able to bundle Bangladesh out for a below par total because of which we were able to get that handy lead or 80 odd runs in the first innings. And had that lead been lower, India were in deep trouble. That spell from our Pacers was crucial in India's win. At the end of 2022, a lot of pundits uh, sat down and analyzed India's performances in the calendar year. And uh, they haven't been great in ODIs and the T20 format. However, I think in the test format, we've still done reasonably well. And in this section, we will talk a little bit about how India has performed in the WTC 2021-2023 uh, cycle. If we look at the points table, I think India are second, just behind Australia and slightly above South Africa. But it's a great thing, right? We have a very strong chance of making it to the finals for the second time in the row. And if we look at what we have done in this cycle, in different series right so we have drawn a series in england we have won a series against new zealand at home but, but the hitting point over there is that we do one test match right we ideally should have won that 2-0 but we won it 
one nil we lost uh, against south africa in south africa uh, we won the series against uh, sri lanka and bangladesh and now the only series remaining in this cycle is against australia at home so let's look at these two series that india drew or lost right the first one was uh, against england and uh, remember this was uh, during the covid era so this series was actually played in two parts uh, in the first part four test matches were played out of which india was leading 2-1 um joe root was england's captain kohli was india's captain and india were really playing an aggressive brand of cricket have and defeated england at lords and at oval and then when india came back for that one off test match uh, the scenario in england cricket had changed completely right ben stokes had taken over the reins the bass ball era had begun the second one was uh, against south africa at home and india were supposed to be the favorites to win that series but honestly when we are traveling to south africa we are you know never the favorites to win yes south africa team was untested there were a lot of unknown commodities in that team because of which people felt that india was the favorite however they had a very strong bowling lineup in rabara and gidi marco jansen they also had a decently good batting lineup so south africa really put up a good show to beat india in that series there were some administrative troubles going on during that series as well right? the change of coach with the change of captain there were a lot of things uh, being talked about outside the cricketing ground which may have also affected india's mindset but apart from both these two series i think india did really well in the world test championship then we will talk about some of the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead of india the first is kl rahul's performance as an opener two numbers we'll try to see how kl rahul has done over the years and does he really find a place in the side so if we look at india's openers in terms of averages kl rahul is 15th in that list all the top 10 batters have an average of 40 plus kl rahul right now has an average of around 36 if we now look at uh, the best openers right what are what are his contemporaries doing and considering the world test championship only rahul again is 17th in that list where he's performed even worse than his career average right so his average in wtc uh, 21 23 has been 33 which is which is fairly poor for an for a test opener let's see how kl rahul's consistency stands so in in batting we talk a lot about people hitting a purple patch and for someone who's as talented as kl rahul we expect that person to have hit the purple patch i've seen that happen a lot during ipl right kl rahul has been a great run scoring form in the ipl but during our analysis i found out that he's never hit that purple patch in test cricket so if we look at rahul's 10 innings running average or rolling average there's a small period between july 2016 and january 2018 his average was above 35 more importantly his average has gone above 50 for hardly a duration of 7 to 8 months right between february 17th and august 17th i think that's where the average was slightly above 50 and this average of 50 signifies a purple patch which means that in the last 10 innings he's played so well that his average is above 50 usually for most players this average will be above 70 or 80 in fact right for players of the caliber of virat kohli and steve smith and this is where kl rahul struggles right i don't think he's ever reached that patch where consistently for last 10 innings he has had a very high average now if we look at years after uh, just, uh, 2017 he has been significantly below the 35 average mark as well right which is again really poor for an opener to have now if we look at his peer in rohit sharma and look at his uh, 10 innings running average we'll see that first of all his overall average of 51 is much higher than 35 which means he's contributing more runs per match and his fluctuations in the average are also very very few right so what you see is kl rahul really not having a purple patch and this is where inconsistency show up you are never confident whether kl rahul is going to deliver or not that's the reason for me to drop him from the test side yes he was the captain but in my honest opinion he shouldn't even be a part of the test team he needs to go back to domestic cricket discover his form and then uh, maybe create a strong case for him there are a lot of cricketers right now who are knocking on the door i think a more deserving candidate should be there the other opportunity that lies in front of india is to correct its heavy dependence on the middle and lower orders to win test matches it's some a number crunching here and found that when india wins a test match there are significant contributions from the middle and the lower order right so middle order and lower order contributions is more than 50% when india's wins 
in test matches and when india loses that's where that contribution from the lower order decreases right so the contribution from the openers is decreasing the contribution from the lower order is decreasing and that's the reason why i think india is losing some of these test matches our opening partnership uh, needs to be relooked at there there is a need to have a lot of consistency there and all the more reason we consider kl rahul in the test team. let's look at uh, the different qualification scenario for india to the wtc final india is very strongly placed to qualify for the finals i think good thing is they still have the entire qualification process in their own hands right they don't have to really worry about other results going their way however the way uh, the series between south africa and australia pans out will decide what india will have to do against australia for them to qualify big assumption here is that south africa will beat west indies 2 nil south africa wins all their four matches then india needs to win that series against australia by any margin and australia will be kicked out of the wtc finals if south africa win three of their four matches then india need to win the series against australia by 3 nil or 3 1 and this is where this series against bangladesh this will be crucial right because india still has that buffer of losing or drawing that one test match against australia if south africa win two of their four matches then india just needs to win that series against australia by any margin and india qualifies and as discussing the second scenario on your screen i said that india will need to have that buffer of one test match against australia and i'll give you the reason why right australia is a very strong traveling team especially when they come to india they've always posed a challenge if we look at the last time they came here india won that series 2-1 but it very easily could have been 2-1 in favor of australia australia won that first test match by 333 runs in pune which was a very very comfortable win in the second test match in bangalore india won that by 75 runs but if you saw that test match india were in a very very difficult position in their second innings for pujara and rahane stitched out that 118 run partnership so that partnership actually put india in a very strong position and then ravi ashwin came in to clean up uh, australia by taking 6 for 41 so that was uh, the turning point of that series actually the third test at ranchi was a draw in the fourth test at dharamshala india won uh by eight wickets eventually winning the series 2-1 what this tells us is that it's not easy to beat australia so australia has been a very strong traveling team to india and uh, it will be realistic to think that india may win the series 3-0 or 3-1 so that additional buffer of losing or drawing a test match eventually came from that win against bangladesh uh, at mirpur the path for india is clear it is in their hands uh, to qualify for the wtc final for the second time and we hope to see india there And now on to the last and the fun part of the episode. In this section, we'll talk about the trivial things that I observed during the match, and I uh, want to know your opinions on this. Pant taking this diving catch with fingers pointing down. Usually, we see this technique uh, employed by the outfielders, but it was very strange to see a wicketkeeper take this type of catch. I think it's risky because the first thing after completing the catch, your fingers may bump against the ground, and the ball may just pop out. That's that's the most immediate effect of this. The other effect is uh, it's going to be very difficult for the third umpire to judge whether. that it was a clean catch or not and i think uh, in in some of the dicey situations third umpire may actually rule against wicket keeper so what do you think about this catch do mention your comments in the section below thank you for watching the video if you liked it please press the like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel bye